Just two months after Michelle Vimenta graduated from college with a journalism degree, she was in a car crash that forever changed her life and almost took it. I was going to the dentist in some um, country road. It was raining. Michelle wrapped her car around a utility pole. The damage was so bad, rescue crews had to use the jaws of life to cut her out. I was in the coma for three and a half, four weeks. Michelle is now 49 years old, living independently, but with permanent effects from a traumatic brain injury. She comes to Seattle BrainWorks in North Seattle every week for classes including yoga and music. Seattle BrainWorks offers a variety of programs for people with brain injuries and operates like a community center. It's run by ProVail, a local nonprofit which helps people with disabilities. Adults with brain injuries can come here to socialize, set goals, develop work skills, and work on their memory, a common symptom of TBI. We typically think of memory as an event happens and then you want to remember that event later. Or you have a task that you need to complete um, that's assigned to you or that you plan to do and then you need to remember to follow up on that. That's definitely a factor. And so the role that we can play is helping people come up with tools to supplement. If, if they have a, a barrier related to memory recall, what are some of the tools that they can use? Probably still the same at the a new study ProVail is paying close attention to found that people with a history of traumatic brain injuries have an increased risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. It was headed up by Dr. Jesse Fan with the University of Washington School of Medicine. I've been interested in, in the interface between traumatic brain injury and, and mental health for you know, quite some time, over two decades. Dr. Fan collaborated with researchers in Denmark for the study, which is the largest of its kind. They looked at 2.8 million patient cases over 36 years in the Danish registry. There was a very clear pattern with, as you uh, increase the number of brain injuries that you've had, the, the risk of dementia does increase. They found that the overall risk of dementia in individuals with a history of TBI was 24% higher compared to people who had never had a brain injury. According to the CDC, TBI is a head injury that disrupts the normal function of the brain. The severity of a TBI may range from mild to severe. A mild TBI is commonly called a concussion. Dementia is a decline in mental ability severe enough that it affects daily life. Alzheimer's is the most common type of dementia. UW Medicine researchers are currently working on 15 studies focused on Alzheimer's right now. The condition affects 47 million people, and researchers say that number is expected to double in the next 20 years. There are a couple of biomarkers that you can see in midlife before clinical symptoms are present. Uh, you know, historically, the way you would see the proteins in the brain, like amyloid beta or tau, were by autopsy and under microscopy. And now we have imaging techniques, so PET scans, uh, where there's a compound that will bind to amyloid beta and now tau in a living brain, and you can see accumulations beginning uh, when people are in their 40s, 50s. Another new study recently released in a medical journal by the American Academy of Neurology also shows an increase in the chance of Parkinson's for people with a history of TBI. Parkinson's is a disorder of the nervous system that affects movement. That study found the more severe the head injury, the more the risk increased. The role or the interaction between traumatic brain injury and Parkinson's, it, it may be a similar process, although via different mechanisms in terms of what is it that gives rise to a neurological condition like Parkinson's from TBI, kind of like what gives rise to dementia from TBI, uh, changing the way that proteins and chemicals in the brain operate and communicate, uh, the, possibly the role of inflammation after injury. Researchers say more steps need to be taken to prevent TBI, but what do you do if you've already had TBI? Doctors say there are several things you can do to reduce your risk. Be both physically and socially active. Limit alcohol use. Avoid tobacco. Get quality sleep. Eat a healthy diet and make sure you get treatment for any other health issues like depression, diabetes, hearing loss, or high blood pressure. 
TBI survivors like Michelle are staying active and finding support in places like Seattle Brainworks. She's even working on building her job skills and using her journalism degree, writing and editing for the program's newsletter called B News. Michelle says she plans to continue on at Brainworks so that she can continue to grow and also so she can help others on their journey. You have to help people um, in class as well as help yourself just so you can get your brain working. Watch City Stream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.